Okay, very good morning. It is Tuesday the 11th of August. Hope you're doing well. Uh, just a quick word here. As you can see, I've got the Amplify Trading YouTube channel up at the moment. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon to put on the notifications for whenever we release new content. You'll get an alert and a push on your phone or on your desktop. Um, just explaining quickly, there's four main categories to our YouTube uh, kind of page. There's the morning daily briefings that I do, which go out every morning. Um, these go up um, slightly delayed on our YouTube channel because they go out live privately to our traders first on Amplify Live. And then we've got the weekly trade setups from Sam, much more technical based. Then we've got Markets Explained with Eddie, where he kind of does a deep dive into some of the key um, news stories in the headlines at that point in time. And then we have uh, Milan Deep from our tech team who has done a, a good series about algorithmic trading. He's got some new content coming soon as well, uh, live sessions and so on. So plenty of, of content material, hopefully that you'll find enjoyable. So, so do subscribe to the channel uh, and hopefully you can make the most of that in your preparation for day-to-day -day trading. Um, but let's push, push on and, and talk about what's moving markets this morning. And gonna start with the charts and really talk about the market in, in quite a technical way. Uh, there's not too much in a way of distinct news flow, I would say, um, from the overnight session. If anything, we had a recovery on Wall Street. It was so interesting yesterday. Uh, I'm going to have a look at the NASDAQ here. The NASDAQ came under quite heavy selling pressure immediately at the open yesterday. <laughs> I saw one guy, uh, one infamous person on Twitter, tweeting about, oh, the bubbles burst, this is it, the NASDAQ, you know, it's the end of days now. Uh, and I was thinking a little bit like, this is just, he's just fallen into the classic trap here, the little bit of downside, uh, it's kind of like of the order would be keep calm and carry on. Look, the market narrative has not changed really here. If anything, as I'll discuss in this briefing, it's supportive of equity longs still. And any opportunity then the market corrects itself and moves down, it's just an opportunity to reassert longs. And that's certainly what we saw yesterday. So yeah, although it seems uh, quite spicy at the time when the market's coming down quite heavy, particularly the underperformance that we saw. And obviously, people are looking at the Nasdaq as the initiator, perhaps, of some kind of pop in markets, given how how it's outperformed with those large cap, mega um, tech names. But yeah, as soon as we hit that low, it's just been returning ever since. And this morning, look to the tick, we've reversed that entire loss already in what less than a day. You know, so yeah, at the moment, then the NASDAQ, I mean, just looking at this, uh, we might as well start on this chart here. Um, we're just coming up to actually, it's quite an interesting technical level just from the near term price activity. You've got that initial print just before the uh, collapse that was seen at the open yesterday, that also coinciding with the retested reopening of Globex trade at the beginning of the week on Sunday night. And you can see here it was respected back on the 5th and also on the 6th, which acted as a bit of a floor for then the push up at the time to what was the retest on, on the all-time highs. So yeah, quite a key level here, just coming up in early uh, European trade index futures off to a positive footing. Uh, Asia overnight, given the, the US recovery into the close on Wall Street, Japanese, Hong Kong equities were up more than 2%. Shares in Australia and South Korea were also positive. Uh, so generally just picking up the baton then here in the, the Eurozone in the UK. Um, on a slightly bigger time frame, this is obviously that longer daily continuation chart we've been looking at. And you can see that traded quite heavy because we broke a key level here in the NASDAQ yesterday at the open. And you can see we pushed all the way down, but quite to a strategic point, which was those previous um, highs, and now what is a support point area at around 10.939. That's pretty much where the market respected yesterday on that brief decline. But importantly, we, we closed the day above that uh, more significant level at 11,058 and since that point we've just continued to bounce um, ever since. Uh, while we're on the US equities I guess we might as well talk about the S&P as well and that just continues to claw away on its pursuit back up to um, all-time highs. So here we are, I've just broken out, uh, the market was finding a little bit of resistance just before I came on here. Uh, it's just, just 7 a.m. now here in London. So we were, we were knocking on the door a couple of times late in the Asia Pacific session, it was holding, but now Europe's in, a bit more increased volume. We've just managed to break on the upside here. Um, on the technical levels, 
probably keep an eye on the bottom end of that late Asian range and then probably here as well which would encapsulate some of the highs that were seen from yesterday's session. These would be important support points on any pullback. Uh, but now as we continue to move higher, if I go back onto a daily, you know, there's not, not a lot now technically, given we're trading at 33.66 until we kind of claw it out now up to the 3400 and 33.97 and a half being that all time high that was seen prior to the pandemic really kicking off in terms of uh, the situation moving outside the borders of mainland China at that time. So um, all things looking fairly good at the moment for the S&P to eventually hit that target. I know Sam for one has been in that that long trade for a, for a number of weeks. So uh, you know I, I would be surprised if he was to take any here and that he would hold it for a little longer on the premise that we do eventually get up closer toward that target. Otherwise elsewhere then the DAX obviously following suit. Uh, the DAX index is up around 150 points this morning. You can see here in the shorter term, we've broken out of uh, an interesting short term level, uh, which is you've got this low print that was seen, uh, really late Asia session, a bit early for Europe to come in, but Europe's come in and as usual in the futures in the DAX, it's just popped up higher, breaking out of that Asia Pacific range. Uh, but that downside level, quite an interesting area of just support which was kind of the range high of activity through last week uh, and now we've just seen a bit of an extension so you can see that period of consolidation really was a reflection of the break that came um, overnight in the commencement of the Asian session so if I just put a box around it here and now if Europe's come in we've just managed to break the top end of that which was also coinciding with the R1 just adding a bit of momentum uh, so that also filtering through into the European indices uh, elsewhere, oil's a little bit firmer uh, this morning. That also, technically, we've, we've just moving over and above the, the highs that we're seeing from yesterday. From a longer time frame, um, this is fairly interesting. Uh, around this 42.36 was an area of resistance back on the 21st, 23rd of July. Uh, that also then does open up the a potential look and retest up at the 5th of August, 2nd of March low price point that was 43.32 which defined the high from last week. A um, few headlines this morning, if I just quickly jump over, talking about oil rising with the prospects for US stimulus buoying demand outlook. Uh, obviously progress in talks between um, Democrats and Republicans are still negotiating a broader additional virus relief package. Uh, this This is still uh, under debate at the moment, but most people would be a belief that at some point in the near future that a compromise of some sort will be seen in order to assist the further uh, economic recovery of the US, which is obviously going to help boost the uh, demand side of the equation. Not only that, a couple of other kind of alternate data I've been looking at in terms of the signs of recovering consumption, uh, the quantity of commercial flights around the world rose about 6% in the seven days to Sunday uh, last week according to Flight Radar 24 data and the average number of planes now is around 67,000 in the sky it's still well below the 100,000 pre-COVID figure however in the last week as I said we're up 6% so there's plenty of upside there for return of consumption with as as I'm going to discuss with COVID, if the situation does improve and some of the stringency on air travel starts to loosen and allow that traffic to recommence and things like tourism gradually to start reopening in some key areas, well then you know, that's going to also add to this idea, like the Saudis were saying at the weekend, that demand is going to recover um, to a fairly strong degree in the second half of the year, all things remaining equal of course. So that also in the context of if that demand does return, don't forget that US active oil rigs at the moment are at their lowest they've been since July of 2005. So also as well, there's kind of a lack of available supply in that sense in the North American focus if we were talking about the Permian Basin, for example. So um, yeah, quite a few things to remain you know, kind of bullish about. I, I guess from an intraday perspective, oil and equities are kind of playing to the same, they're dancing to the same song at the moment in respect to they're both moving in a uniform fashion because it's dependent and based upon this, this outlook over the economic picture uh, going forward. As such then, just given some of the movements, T-Note's pretty quiet, but we're down a tick 
And if I quickly go back to the charts, um, it does consolidate then the downward trend that was materializing through yesterday afternoon. If I actually look at the US 10 year, uh, just from a technical basis, you can see we had a, uh, a double top. This would have been last week, um, rejection around 140.13. And if you look at it on a daily, that did come after we had seen a decent break higher um, out of a long standing area of resistance that really uh, shackled the price action on the upside through April, May, and also July. We broke out of that at the end of July and we, we kind of petered out at 140.13 um, towards the, the, the beginning of last week. And since that point, we've just grinded back down. So I'd be looking for an area of support here. If I just zoom it in a little bit, you've got that, that previous strong area, which will now turn support at 139.22. And I'm also just keeping an eye then so kind of coinciding with that is a trend line forming from uh, mid-June. It's had a retest on a couple of attempts. So quite a nice area of support here for the 10 year. So wouldn't be surprised to come down another couple of ticks if equities remain firm today. Uh, if it does though, I'd be looking for support at around those areas. Uh, and then in the precious metal space, yeah, interesting morning for gold. Um, let me just move this over a touch so you can see it more clearly. Um, these were the markups, of course, I was talking about at the weekend. Uh, and gold, there's nothing really specific that's come out from the headline. Um, the dollar is flat at this point. So I'd say at the moment, this is quite technical the way it's moving. Uh, you can see I've got these two rectangles which were defining what I was talking about as key areas that the market might respond to on any pullbacks. And certainly that first area was important. Uh, the market did bounce um, in uh, the prior week but it also bounced then on that initial retest as well and there's also was a, was a longer trend line I was keeping an eye on here which having broken that and that support area I think is what's contributing to some of this downside pressure this morning in gold so you know just as quick as it can go up it can also go down in that way when it breaches key significant levels so on the downside now uh, as we come down the next near term target 2009 and a half you've got that previous a momentary high that we had on the second when we popped up to what was all time highs at that point in time. Uh, just looking here, that also coincides with the S2 on the daily pivot, so it could be an interesting level there just to keep an eye on, uh, on this kind of more momentum play, I'd say, on this uh, deterioration in price we're seeing this morning. Uh, the more important key level, though, comes down in this downside rectangle here. Uh, if I just move the, the box up over my video, uh, so that being that that level of symbolic um, importance 2000 and was that key area of resistance now turned support. So kind of two key areas support looking here, uh, 2009 and a half and then 2000 if we remain heavy. Um, could we break 2000? I'm not so sure. I still think that um, underlying fundamentals haven't really sh shifted or altered too much. The COVID stuff I'm gonna talk about has developed, you could argue in a more positive way and that is some of the underlying positivity is, is emanating from that fact but I still think there's enough kind of risks on the table you've got medium term risks of course in the form of the US election volatility uh, given this whole mail-in ballot is likely to delay results for the election which is going to create all kinds of uh, uncertainty so I think there's definitely right reasons to still um, have a gold position in terms of a portfolio mix for exposure um, so if we come down to 2000, I think people might look to kind of reload in some respect uh, if we do get there today would be my, my kind of base view. All right, let's, uh, let's quickly run through um, some currency news. Let's, let's talk about cable for a moment. Uh, I was just looking at cable here, uh, slightly more short term, I guess. If I can just lift that up, you can probably just about make that out. I'm taking this uh, trend line from, from the 30th here. You can see had a close retest on the 4th, retested it on the 7th and on the 10th. So uh, there's an area there definitely on the downside I'd be keeping an eye on. And that does then coincide in sterling with that S1 with the trend line, which would be in here. So I'd be looking around that kind of area. And then you've got the 130 handle below, which would be those lows and the respective high. You can see it just off screen here. Uh, would be quite key areas of support uh, from a near term price point of view. Um, not entirely that keen on this, this top trend line. It has been tested three times, but uh, the market certainly did react to it uh, this morning uh, in early trade as the dollar is just resuming a touch of strength. 
Um, in the near term, you've got the overnight Asia Pacific low would come in at around the pivot level. Uh, and that also would coincide with around the low point that we had from yesterday evening. So quite an interesting area of support coming down uh, at around that 64 to 67 type area. Any break below there, then obviously there is a bit of uh, clean air between there and really down to those more key areas support I'd be eyeing kind of around the 130, 29, 30 type area. Uh, so quite interesting to see how it reacts at around this key area here at 130, 64, if you miss that short opportunity further up on the on that trend line and close proximity to the to the overnight low in cable. So cable at the moment, I mean that's the more um, zoomed in 30 minute picture. If you're looking and you're not that interested in getting too involved in some of the action um, intraday, then you know we're still within that broader area of consolidation between 130, really 130 uh, and 132. And so it might be that if the market doesn't yet come down and you'd be looking for something more interesting uh, more towards around the low that we printed down on Friday post payrolls with some of that dollar strength that we had at the time. Um, quick look elsewhere at the euro and yeah just looking at the euro here just a key area uh, I think to keep an eye on on the upside which might act as a strong area of resistance it already has done actually this morning uh, so for any of the early birds might have got hold of a bit of that uh, price action just given some of the slight pickup in the dollar we're seeing at the moment which is weighing on both cable and the euro dollar currency pairs uh, that being then that low that we had again uh, similar mimicking the the dollar reaction to the payroll move so that was the friday uh, post payroll low uh, and then the markets responded a couple of times you can see a reaction to around that price point at 117 63 64s uh, and the markets just drifted since that point so it doesn't look particularly too interesting where it is at the moment uh, I guess you could say it's having a little bit of a test at around uh, the area of which it's trading really at the moment but unless it comes back up to that level assessing all things at that point in time I think that's quite an interesting ceiling to the price for the time being uh, that would be the key level to watch um, any further push to the downside we just I'm sure if you can see that just above my uh, my video camera but if you get back down to retest what was the overnight Asia Pacific low, uh, then that does bring into play the low that we had back on the on the fourth as well in the short term. Um, so yeah, that would be be quite an interesting area to to keep an eye on today in the currency market. Um, talking of cable, one thing uh, we did have overnight, just so you're aware, in UK press. Um, the Bank of England will step up quantitative easing if the British economy slows and struggles again. Uh, this was in the Times newspaper in the UK, citing the Deputy Governor Dave Ramstin. Uh, Ramstin is quite interesting. He he actually on the hawk dove spectrum um, sits kind of centre hawkish. Um, I don't think anyone's really we could classify as being hawkish at this point. It's just less dovish, but he does tend to sit leaning that side. So quite interesting here he's to me this is basically saying we don't want to really want to do negative interest rates uh, because what he's effectively saying is look the nearest and clearest tool that we could use here is even though we've expanded quantitative easing the asset purchase facility by 100 billion pounds at two meetings ago we could quite appropriately increase that 745 billion further if needed so for me it just puts more steps in before they get to negative so it is although Although on, as a, on a surface level it might sound dovish, actually I actually think it's more on the hawkish side, if that makes make sense, if anything. So overall, I wouldn't over-interpret this. It's not really going to be something. This is more repetition if you think about what the Bank of England said at their last meeting. It's, it's not that much different, to be honest. Uh, the other thing from a UK perspective, British consumers spent the most last month since the country went into coronavirus lockdown in March. Uh, as pubs, restaurants, barbers, beauty salons all reopened according to data from Barclay Card and the British Retail Consortium uh, as well over the um, over, overnight session. We saw that data come out. So again, uh, I would eradicate these news stories. I'm, I'm bringing them to your attention so you're aware of them. Really, it's the technical levels and the dollar movement that's really deriving uh, the movement this morning. Just a quick look then at a couple. I talked about COVID briefly and, and, and some of this risk on definitely is emanating from the fact that you know the key areas we've been monitoring, of course, throughout this whole pandemic uh, has been North America, mainland Europe, and really the Far East and China. China generally has been relatively stable. If anything, their, their economic data 
uh, has reflected that, albeit you know we continue to remain uh, kind of vigilant for developments going forward, of course. Um, in mainland Europe, there was a flutter of activity where people were getting a little bit nervous about three weeks ago or so with Spain, particularly in focus in France, but that as well as kind of dissipated a little bit. But then in North America, which was obviously the key defining one, given it's the world's largest and most important economy, um, it has been quite interesting because if we were looking at um, a couple of these graphics, so just looking at the general trend that we've been say, seeing, there's a couple I'm going to cycle you through. This is looking at the number of positive COVID-19 cases per day. And you can see if we look at the seven day average, it's decelerating at a fairly rapid pace at this moment in time. The other one that quite a few people are looking at here is that markets are taking some degree of comfort from the fact that New York, California, Texas are all reporting falling hospitalizations. So if you remember, there was a bit of a disconnect at the time when hospitalizations were, were soaring back about four or five weeks ago. And we thought then the inevitability that death rates would pick up, but they never really quite um, saw a rapid pickup. They certainly did in terms of the number per day started to consistently, in terms of deaths, uh, go over 1,000. However, now, if that was then uh, a kind of if hospitalizations uh, was kind of a lagging indicator, well then now they're declining and they're declining at a fairly consistent pace from the peak that we saw during the first episode of the first wave in the kind of tri-state area in the northeast in America. So this is another kind of positive sign as well that's emerging. Uh, and then if we're looking at week over week percentage change of seven day average deaths, then that in kind has also followed suit. And although the number is still a positive 2.9%, the idea here is then it has continued to decrease and now coming back down to potentially moving into negative territory, which we wouldn't have been seeing ever since then uh, before we had the, the outbreak in the in the Sun Belt region in, in those more south, south uh, and west states in America. Uh, the other thing then as this develops is the kind of consumer behavior because obviously consumers getting out back out there and regaining confidence and going about their normal activities, whether work, uh, dining, shopping, uh, where it's permitted, of course. But Google's search interest has also started to decrease down to levels that haven't really been seen in a long time. As you can see, worldwide search interest in COVID-19 is at levels far below its previous peaks that we've had. And I do think that that's an important component from the psyche point of view uh, for the critical component of an economy to function and recover uh, more thoroughly, which is that of the consumer. So there definitely is a couple of things here, I think, that are, that are still supportive of this idea um, that equities can continue this, this kind of gradual rise. I don't think that the, the pop that I mentioned that someone on Twitter was mentioning yesterday, I think it's a little premature to call that just yet. Um, so that doesn't mean we won't be without some 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 bumps in the road where we see uh, situations like what we had at the open yesterday uh, with the case of the Nasdaq. But what I still think will happen is that people will buy into those uh, those pullbacks. So yeah, that's it. That's your your morning briefing. So hopefully that was useful. Uh, a couple of charts there. I'll share those in the uh, the, the private. Um, zoom chat channel we have for our traders so you guys will have those to hand cool all right guys have a good day and i will catch you tomorrow any questions just let me know